Do you know we create heaven or hell? Heaven or hell is the state of mind. We listen to our mind and we get tormented by it. We don't realize our mind is our friend. We should control our mind, not the other way around. To conquer the mind is the hardest thing to do and the easiest thing to do. You decide. The choice is yours. You can be all like the great masters. They walk in the same shoes as you do. They took step by step and never lost their way. Oh, they fell down and made mistakes. They learned from them. Some of them probably had a lot of bad vices. But when you go inside and experience the source of life, they eventually go away. This is not an easy path. But just being on the planet is challenging. The more you take individual steps, the path becomes easier. I remember in the beginning, it took hours to calm down the mind. Now I close my eyes and my mind is calm. Yet, this is still the beginning of my journey. The journey will go on forever. If death approaches you, what do you do? Now good old Bugs Bunny might say, don't take life so seriously, you will never get out of it alive. It's not a question of if, but when. We roll the dice in our life. I remember being young and riding a razor's edge when surfing a huge wave. If you fell, you were in for your worst nightmare. Imagine being held underwater for what seems to be an eternity. At times, you may be held down for two ways. At that time, you really are aware of how precious your breath is. You mustn't panic. You must let go and totally relax. I think that surfing and meditation teaches one about death. All surfers at one time or another get into a circumstance, circumstance bordering between life and death. It can go either way. Yet the surfer keeps on surfing. Not all. In the 60s, a famous surfer named Greg Knoll took off in a way that nobody should ever take off on. He was the wave of the century. He didn't make the wave, but he made the drop. He got him obliterated. Greg made it to shore and gave up surfing. I probably would have too. He escaped the lion's den. Surfing brings one to the borderline of life and death. If you're not a surfer, it's hard to describe. Your awareness changes over time. Meditation is just like surfing. Only you catch the wave inside. Meditation brings one to the same state of being borderline between life and death. Life and death are only one breath away. Life and death are intertwined. Ask a surfer and a meditator. They will tell you they're almost one and the same. In reality, we never die. The body does. <laughs> Yet our soul is eternal and timeless. You are the universe. Death unites you back to your true state. This is your true nature. A surfer rides the wave 
and feels the harmony of the universe. He can't truly express it, yet he goes on surfing forever. I have been meditating for many moons. Surfing and meditating are both ways to truly capture the wave of life. Your respect for life does enhance. When you are brought to a life and death <coughs> situation, your perspective changes. Somehow, you see how precious life is. Maybe that's what it's all about. Gratitude of being alive fuses into your being while I'm alive. If we are immortal, where have we been? Many people say we have only one chance on earth. You come and you go, and that's it. End of discussion. Yet if we are truly immortal, it means we are never created nor destroyed. Our body will die. It will go back to the earth, yet our soul is timeless. Can you imagine you existed before the earth was created? You existed before the universe was created. What were you doing? Now that's a good question. Ponder over the meaning of these words. Put down your cell phones and contemplate. I'm all for cell phones. They are a great help. Yet my pet peeve of how, how distracted they are. So many people are addicted to their cell phones. They even risk death while driving. What is so important about the text you sent out while you died in a car crash? I feel another web we have created. We have created another layer from us and the universe. Instead of getting closer, we are putting distance between us and our true nature. In fact, our reality is the cell phone. How many families are at our restaurants on their cell phones? How about the business <coughs> meetings? I look around the room and most of the people are looking at their cell phones. Can you really pay attention to what the speaker is saying? We are getting <coughs> distracted. Many young mothers are on the cell phones while pushing the child around in a stroller. Did you know that a baby knows when you are paying attention or not? No wonder children feel neglected. Humanity has become addictive, just like a drug. Unfortunately, we don't see it. We are thinking we are being normal. Can you imagine if the entire planet discovered their true nature? There would be no war. War would become obsolete. Peace on earth. Kindness would be all around. Love your neighbor would be throughout the land. There would be no poverty. We would come to a great solution. Humanity would take care of the planet Earth. We would truly be custodians of this land. Murder and theft would be obsolete. How could you steal from someone 
when in reality you are stealing from yourself? How can you murder somebody when in reality you are murdering yourself? The old energies of the past would be considered barbaric. Who needs war, anger, and lust for power? Our true nature is kindness, love, and compassion. You are a piece of this puzzle. Discover your true nature. Ponder these words. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh. Now let's take a look at this with a rational mind. In the beginning was the Word. Before time and space was the Word. That means way before humans existed on Earth. Even before the Earth was created, there was the Word of God. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Is there a primordial frequency, one of energy, that is God? Is God a multi-dimensional energy? This energy is beyond time and space. This energy created the universe, and the Word was made flesh. This energy creates us. This energy lies inside of us. 90% of your DNA is not junk DNA. It's quantum energy. It's God. You were made in His image. The wise man says it's up to you to solve this riddle. Can you experience God while you are alive? When I was young, I asked this question to my minister. He said, no, <coughs> only when you die can you experience God. I didn't believe him. Somehow, I knew the human body was built for this experience. It was hardwired. I knew that the light of God existed within me. I read, <coughs> Many of the world's greatest scriptures, and they all said, a great light exists within. If thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. This is not a metaphor or a theory. This is truth spoken by all the great masters. Only you could open this door with your intent. You have free choice. You can solve this riddle. Your life won't be the same. I respect all religions. They are all talking about the same thing. They have different points of view. I think that is grand. Different stories from different times and places. They all believe in one creator. God is not a Christian. God is not a Jew. God is not a Muslim. God is not a Buddhist. God is beyond all our projections we give him. God is quantum. We are linear. We go from point A to point B. God exists in the entire universe, beyond time and space. Love makes the universe go around. Discover your true essence. You were built and designed to discover your creator within. You can solve this puzzle. 
Is life like a page break? We live this life and suddenly it's over. We leave like a thief in the night, never to be seen again. What is the point? Is there a reason why we are alive? We come and go into this world. Do we always run in circles? Have we learned to love our fellow man? Is there a purpose to this life? What am I holding on to? Why am I so angry? I feel I'm on the seesaw of life. I can't control my emotions. My actions are out of control. Do I ever learn from my past actions? The masters have said, open up your heart and dive within. You will solve this great puzzle. To be spiritual is to be practical. Many people think a spiritual person has his heads in the cloud. He is far away from the practical ways of earth. The Buddhists have a book, Chop Wood, Carry Water. You must have your head in heaven and your feet on the ground. This is a practical journey. Every action you take must be in harmony. Oh, there are many lessons along the way. Many have tread upon this path. At times it will be rocky and the path goes up a mountain. Every moment you learn along the way. It's not easy to drop your negative emotions. If it was, we would have been on top of the mountain a long time ago. I feel to be spiritual a person to be more practical than ever. You have to be conscious moment by moment. That is not easy. Have you ever tried to tame your mind? Sit still for one minute and tell me the truth. It's difficult. Chop wood, carry water. Only you can understand this riddle. Last night, Oprah gave Michelle Obama her last interview with the White House. I really loved it. She had such love, patience, and compassion. Oprah asked, what allowed you to stand up for your own truth and find your way? Being a grown-up, Obama replies, she is extremely mature and full of wisdom. Over the past year, so many people have thrown her garbage. She has learned the truth that turned the other cheek. She says, when they go low, we go high. This is exactly what the great masters taught. She has served her country with dignity and respect. We said the Obamas will, she said the Obamas will help out President Trump and his family in the transition and beyond. I think as Americans, we should take a look at their legacy and be proud. I know I am. Yesterday, Oprah asked the question how the critics called her an angry black woman. She was like, dang. You don't even know me. You sort of feel like, wow, where'd that come from? But then you sort of think, this isn't about me. 
This is about the per person or people who wrote it, you know. That's just the truth. How true that is. We see the world through tainted glasses. Most people who called her an angry black woman are themselves angry. Angry has consumed them. They project their anger on someone who isn't full of hate and rage. Humanity must take off our tainted glasses. The Democrats and Republicans aren't evil. They have different points of view. We must see ourselves as Americans first. Wow, the end of your journey is about to end. You're about to take your last breath. This was an incredible journey you had. Another journey is about to be embarked on. You see, your body dies, but your essence is eternal. You are about to become one with the universe. You are about to become one with God. This is your true nature. You are like a raindrop returning to the ocean. The raindrop merges into the ocean. You merge with God. You come into this world from God. Slowly over time, you forget your true nature. Upon death, you go back to the source. All the great masters have said, discover the essence behind your breath. Something is keeping you alive. Your breath is ever so precious. Don't take it for granted. Your breath is a gift from God. The more you become aware of your breath, the vast mysteries of life will be revealed. Your true nature is kindness. Your true nature is love and compassion. Your true nature is patience and tolerance. You are the universe. You just don't know it. The greatest treasures lie inside of us. We have a tendency to think that happiness lies outside of ourselves. It never has and never will. That precious car you always wanted will soon be a headache. At first it's like, wow, I always wanted this. The first few weeks the car brings you so much happiness. You show it off to your friends and take them for a spin in your new car. Unfortunately, after a period of time, the thrill is gone. B.B. King even wrote a song about this. Many people think that if these gifts are truly there, why don't I know it? Well, there is a mind within. Yes. There are diamonds within. Yes. How do you dig for diamonds? You need a shovel and a pit. To answer this riddle in life, you need to learn how to dig the jewel inside of you. That's what all these sands are for. The miracle of life lies behind your breath. Follow your breath moment to moment. This is where your incredible journey begins. A friend of mine just had a friend who died. They used to play baseball together. It was his last dance. 
Life is precious. We never know when we're going to have the last dance in life. The curtains in life can close at any moment. That's why life is a mystery. We come into this world and stay a while. Unfortunately, we never know how long we're going to be alive. All human beings are in this predicament. The wise masters from the past all said the same thing. Discover your true essence. Something is keeping you alive. These words aren't just some theory. Millions of people are discovering their true nature. The inner mirror is merely destiny. All you have to do is clean your mirror in life. Day by day, you can dance with life. You can dance to the rhythm of life. You can be in harmony with God and the universe. Even if your physical body is crippled, you can dance with it. You see, your true essence is never created nor destroyed. Your true essence is freedom. Your true essence is kindness. Your true essence is love and compassion. Your true essence is patience and tolerance. Your dance, your true dance partner lies inside of you. Your dance partner is the greatest dancer in the universe. Even Shiva bows to the dancer within your being. Yet we have forgotten our true nature. I know this seems like some fantasy. Many people think it can't be true. But what if it is? How can you prove it? The only true way is to discover your true essence within. Take the first steps of reading your garden. Day by day, throw away anger and hate. Plant the seeds of kindness, love, and compassion. Water them daily. Take care of your inner garden. You will see the fruits of your actions. Meditate daily. You can solve this riddle. Someday you will have your last dance. Your dance partner will take you off this dance floor of life and sweep you off your feet. Do you know that every small gesture you make, little drops of mercy fall from heaven? This one small act makes God proud. Imagine if the entire world would make one small gesture day by day. God doesn't bring peace on earth. Only He is king. God is our coach in life. He will not play the game for you. Nobody gets a free time. Little drops of mercy fall from heaven.
There are no words to describe laughter. When we laugh, the entire universe laughs. The world is joyous. Laughter can bring you to tears of delight. Laughter can take your sorrow away. When I was young and being moody, my brother would laugh at me. I would get angry. He would laugh even more. Eventually, I would see that I was seeing a molehole as the mountain. I would begin to laugh and my sorrows disappear. Laughter is the greatest medicine. Open your life to laughter. You will be glad you did. When I was young, I realized something profound. It was the following. You are your own doctor. Many people go to the doctor and expect the doctor to fix them. They don't want to take any responsibility. Hey doc, I'm sick. Fix me. Sadly, this is the reference point for our healthcare today. I was recently got a job offer that helps hospitals save money on health procedures. We had a great conversation. I mentioned that for many moons, I believe in preventative medicine. I said, we must make the lifestyle changes in order to be healthy. The man said it couldn't be done. People don't want to take responsibility. No wonder our health system is in sham. Thousands of people a year die from the drugs given by their doctors. What about the side effects? This drug could cause cancer to even death. You want me to take this? <clears throat> Each and every person needs to take responsibility for our health. This is the only body you get, at least for this go around. What good is it to be spiritual? Many people ask this question. We come into this world to find out who we truly are. We look all over the place. Life is a journey, and at times we are lost, and we think we are found. At times we think we are found, but we are lost. Do you know that a part of you is the universe? You are the sun the moon and stars. How would you like to discover your true essence? How would you like to drop your anger and be in love with your fellow man? All the traits of the great masters are hidden within. You can be kind, tolerant, and full of compassion. This is your true nature. If this creation has a rule of life, I think it would be the following. Love. Simple it is. Love created the universe. Love created this beautiful planet. Love created you and me. Love is kind and patient. God is love. Love is God. Sit still and feel the love of God in your heart. I just learned a few days ago that Mahatma Rajaswar passed on. 
John Aptek was dying to post on Facebook. Rod Strong was loved by thousands of people. He had a great heart. He was kind, compassionate, and full of love. In his early days, he was a great judge. He was a beacon of light to all. People from all around the world have written about their love for the man. He was wise and practiced what he preached. Roger Swar was extremely funny and loved to laugh. His most famous quote was, A meeting without eating is cheating. To this day, there are probably thousands of people who remember his quoting this. I remember one Canada's Thanksgiving Day when he came to cook for around six people. He was an incredible cook. I will never forget the laughter and sense of family among us. Everyone would consider him as a friend. He had a way to make you feel good about yourself. I look back and we were all quite young and naive. Yet he had a way to embrace all around him in kindness. Kindness is sort of lost in the world today. Yet I love the theory that death is a scattering of ashes throughout the universe. This means the true essence of Roger Zoar exists inside of us. His body may be gone, yet his soul is eternal. He has gone back to the source of all. Our sweet memories of him will live forever until we meet again.
Martin Dell. This is another story of the web that ties us together. Martin is John Byer's stepdad. I first met him in the 70s in New York City. Ten years later, I live in Miami Beach. Martin comes down frequently to go windsurfing. He buys an apartment in Miami Beach. We develop a great relationship. I remember the great restaurants we would go to. Fast forward a few years. I'm living in San Diego. I get a phone call from Martin saying he's coming to town for a few days, invites me to go sailing with him and his son's friends. In the 70s, I babysat him in New York City. One interesting story about Martin. At one point in time, he was a diplomat serving in France. He was quite young at the time. Many times people would ask Martin, could we see your father, not knowing he was a diplomat. Rest in part, rest in peace, Martin. I have great memories of you. Mary Beth Jackson. Love it. I must admit, I don't know Mary Beth very well. We didn't hang out together. Yet, she had a heart of gold. One of my favorite moments was on top of a mountain. A snowstorm was taking place. Inside of the temple, you could hear huge typo drums reverberating into the night. It was a sight to behold. Prayers were sent out to around the world. Meditation was thick in the air. Ella was on earth. Afterwards, sweet fellowship occurred. I remember Mary Beth making and serving chai. It was absolutely delicious. Now, I love chai. And this was like liquid gold droplets of love. At times, Mary Beth told me her precious stories on her journey of life. I learned all about Uncle Bob. He seemed like quite a character. Mary Beth loved her uncle. To be honest, I didn't see a broken bone in her body. She loved to meditate. You could see it in her eyes. She cared for humanity. Mary Beth didn't boast about her experiences. She just shined like the sun. She had nothing to prove. I haven't seen Mary Lou for probably a good 10 years. I learned of her passing a few days ago. Memories never die. Yes, the physical dies, but the soul lives forever. I believe we are all shooting stars. When we leave this body, we become stardust. Mary Lou is just inside of us. I can see, still see her smiling face dancing into the night. Life is precious. Someday Mary Lou will appear on the scene. She will just have a different body for now. She is dancing with her master. My grandmother Josie taught me about the love of God. Whenever we saw each other, she would say, God loves you. My brother and I would giggle with delight. She looked like Mrs. Santa Claus. Her laughter filled the air. It seemed she didn't have a care in the world. She loved life and life loved her. She'd always be an inspiration to me. I have a seaside painting in my house that she created. 
It reminded me of the times walking along the beach. I love you, Farrah the Jills. Our days here are numbered. Many ancient cultures say we come into this world with so many breaths. Moment by moment we breathe, breath by breath. Each breath gives us life. Each breath is one more towards death. Isn't that a paradox? Life and death in the same world. Mystics have tried to solve this problem for thousands of years. Our life and death, a cycle of life. We are born, we are created, we live our life, our life is preserved. Ultimately, at the end of the journey, we die, yet our soul never dies. We are the universe. We just don't know it. Does that excite you? Or, yeah, right. What have you been smoking? Now, I'm not the first person to say this. I'm a student of life. All the great masters have talked about the same thing. You have a piece of the puzzle of life inside of you. The goal is to find the piece of the puzzle. When you do, you will answer this riddle. Life is not mundane. Our attitude is. And each and every moment, the universe is keeping you alive. You can tap into this inside of you. When you do, even for a second, your life will change. You will slowly wake up from your slump. Notice, I said slowly, the universe works in a slow manner. We are impatient. The universe is patient. We can learn ever so much by going inside. There are literally thousands of documents describing the benefits of looking inside. The signpost is everywhere. We just need to go beyond our ego at times. We need to look outside of the box for answers. You can solve this riddle. Our days here are numbered. When I first moved to Hawaii, <clears throat> I learned that an old junior high friend was living on Maui. <clears throat> I hadn't spoke to him in probably 20 years. <clears throat> Paul was a twin too, so we had a lot in common. Both of us were surfers. When I met him after 20 years, I was real impressed by him. He was truly a genuine human being. He carried that love of spirit. He was a genuine. He was full of love and compassion. He had a lot of friends on this island and introduced me to, to them. I didn't pick up any ego from him at all. We became greater friends. I would meet him very early in the mornings at the beach. 
He taught me the ropes about surfing in Hawaii. He had a great sense of humor. Both of us were involved in our quest to find God. We shared a lot of love and brotherhood together. <clears throat> I found out that he was dying from cancer. He had cancer for five years. It would come and go. Paul never complained about it. When I was in his presence, I felt gratitude that I knew a human being like this. In the end, Paul died. Hundreds of surfers came to a huge party at the beach. This is what Paul wanted. He wanted each one of us to cherish life. Even amidst his death, his presence was there. Paul, wherever you are, I love you. Aloha. You are the universe. You have simply forgotten. We are looking for the source of life. We are looking in the wrong places. We look outside for the source of life. It will never be found that way. No, that's the truth. All the great masters have said the same thing. Imagine you have a computer and it's not plugged in. Will your computer run? No, it must be connected to the source. Plug it in. Turn on the computer. Hey, it's up and running. Now take your awareness within. With your intent, plug yourself into the source of life. Turn on the switch. Over time, with patience, you will understand. Buddha was the enlightened one. He showed us the way. He was a prince who left his palace. He would be considered a billionaire today. Yet why did he leave his riches behind? Why did he leave his family behind? In this present age, you can keep your riches. You can keep your family. But in order to be enlightened, you must leave all your negativity behind. You can't be enlightened with your negative baggage. As the Dalai Lama said, kindness is my religion. Be kind. At times it's very difficult, especially with your adversaries. Love, patience, tolerance, and compassion is the keys. You must leave all darkness behind. Buddha became the light. He became enlightened. He showed us the way. You are what you think you are. I can't do that. Yep, yeah, can't do that. I don't have time to stop to discover my true nature. Yet, yeah, you don't have time to discover your true nature. I can't change. Yet, yeah, you can't change. Nobody loves you. Yet, yeah, nobody loves you. The world is against me. Yep, yeah, the world is against me. I'm a loser. Yep, you are a loser. You are what you think you are. <coughs> Pay attention to your thoughts. Change your attitude of life. You can solve this riddle.
It's not in your destiny to suffer. You can make a conscious choice to turn your life around. Isn't it amazing how many people have turned around their lives? They were sinking and yet they made it out safely. This is the human spirit. We are here to help one another. We are here to be your friend. We are not here to judge or condemn you. We are all on the same journey of life. The wisdom we have gained, we are sharing with you. We hope you can learn from our mistakes. That's why we tell our story. Humanity is precious. We are known throughout the universe. Remember, it's not in your destiny to suffer. We are all on this journey of life. Our goal is to go from darkness to light. We come from the light. We are born and slowly we forget our true nature. We soon fall asleep. How do we wake up? <coughs> Mankind has pound, pondered this question forever. The masters have said, dive within your heart and discover your true essence. You are the light of God. You are the universe. You just don't know it. May the circle be unbroken. May you discover your golden wings. You were meant to fly. You are like the swan flying in a dark sky. You were meant to soar. This is your true nature. Your mirror is covered with dust. You can't see who you truly are. Discover the secret of this riddle in your heart. Open up your door within. Here are some basic questions to ask yourself. Who am I? Where did I come from? Where will I go when I die? Is there a purpose to life? What is keeping me alive? Where is God? Ponder this for a while. The answers lie within. To ponder it over means to think it over. When I was young, I didn't truly understand the concept of ponder it over. I would say, let's get to the facts. We can brush it over. Yet pondering makes the mind go within. It helps connect us to our higher selves. It enables us to connect where we can be open. To ponder something over is to stir the pot. When the soup settles, the answer comes to the surface. Pondering is a way to connect to something far greater than yourself. Have we forgotten why we should ponder in our life? And so why? Are we so distracted in our daily affairs? We miss out. We have forgotten our true nature.
Did you know you have been around for eons? You were never created, and you will never die. You are the universe. You are the sun, moon, and stars. You are calm. You are compassion. You are patient. You are love. You are a creative force. You are on an incredible journey. You have an incredible mission to perform. You are never alone. You are family. You can solve this puzzle. We are all on an incredible journey. Just think we are never judged by the creator. The goal of this journey is to find our true nature. <clears throat> it is to transform ourselves from darkness to light. We come and go, and each time we learn more about ourselves. We learn slowly to conquer our fear. We learn slowly to overcome our anger. We learn slowly to let go of our negative emotions. It doesn't matter who you are, we are all on this journey. When we die, we go back to the source. A grand party is held in our honor. You go back home to your family. You are born again and you continue your life's lessons. This cycle will continue forever. You may even continue your journey somewhere else. You are not only alive on this planet. Remember, you have been alive forever. Ponder this riddle. It's truly something to think about. You can solve this riddle. I just learned yesterday that a dear friend of mine, Randy Stapler, died last Friday. In my high school yearbook, Randy wrote the following, a word of wisdom from a fool. Randy's one word was OM, yet he used the letter O as a yin yang symbol. To be honest, it was quite profound for its time. Randy had a great heart. My twin brother and I ran cross country and track together with Randy. He was always a delight to be around. I last talked to Randy only a few months back. He talked about his kids and spending time in Iraq. Both of us loved to cook. We both loved the ocean. <coughs> we had so much in common. I would see incredible posts on Facebook for Randy and his six kids. They all had an incredible love for each other. The day he died, all six kids were there. And what a beautiful way to leave this world. Randy's body died, yet his spirit is eternal. His ashes were spread across the universe. Randy is still alive. Close your eyes and go into the silence. You will sense Randy's presence. Randy lives inside of your heart. He is a part of you. So whenever you are sad about your dear dad living this planet, remember he is a part of you. Those glorious memories never go away. They are a part of you. Randy is riding the incredible wave of the universe. He is a cosmic surfer now. Some things never change. They just transform and go into another dimension. Love you, Randy. We will see your shining face again.
My dear friend Richie died a few days ago. I haven't seen him in over 30 years. He was a great singer. He loved to meditate. Combine these two and he sang like an angel. He could light up an auditorium when he sang. Richie was humble. There was no horror of, look how great I am. He just loved to sing. Richie and I worked together for a few years. We would laugh and tell stories while we worked. Even after all this time, I feel our friendship will never go away. Rest in peace, Richie. May you sing forever. In the Upanishads, a great Indian holy book, is this saying, Sat Chit Ananda. Truth is the consciousness of bliss. When the mind vibrates with truth, the awareness is of bliss. The entire universe is alive. The entire universe is aware. The entire universe is built with the supreme bliss and love of the Creator. This experience lies within your heart. It's your choice. Look inside for the answer. When I was young, at times I wondered on the probability of God. How could some power be beyond time and space? Why is there a constant war? Why doesn't God stop? Why doesn't God stop the nonsense in this world? How do I find God? These are the questions I have. Over the years of meditating, I realized that we have a free choice. God has always been inside of us. We just have to open the door. Wars can stop. God won't stop them. Only human beings can stop them. The problems man have, God won't solve them. Only man can fix them by working together. When we look at the stars at night, we see the majority of the sky as empty space. Is it truly empty? Scientists have a theory that dark energy exists. Cryon says there's a field of multidimensional energy which pervades the entire universe. No present day instruments can detect it. Why? There's no instrument known to man that can, de that can detect quantum energy of God. We have the same energy inside of us, and the majority of people on Earth have not discovered it. If we didn't find it within ourselves, how can we discover it in the universe? In reality, there is no empty space. The universe is alive. It's your choice to solve this riddle. It took man centuries for man to break the four minute one. Roger Bannister from England broke it on one fine day. 
Ever since the barrier was broken, many men have ran fast. It seems in life, once something is obtained, the door is wide open. The same goes with the heart. Millions of people are like you and me. The door's way to the heart is being open. Love and compassion is beginning to be the law. By healing ourselves, we are healing the planet. The light we discover within ourselves shines throughout the world. The four minute mile of discovering your true essence has been broken. It's your choice to discover this jewel within. Steve Hudson, rest in peace. Steve was a good childhood friend. He was a surfer and loved the ocean. We were in with a great group of friends. All of us loved the ocean. The ocean was a part of our lives. I always remember Steve's smile. It lit up his face. Steve had a great sense of humor. His mind had a lot of wits. I only saw Steve two times since high school. We were both living in Hawaii. Steve lived on the Big Island and I lived on Maui. We had a great time reconnecting. It seemed just like yesterday that we played in the ocean. Steve now has kids. The circle of life goes on. I will miss Steve, but I know that he is still alive. You see, the body dies, but the soul lives forever. The essence of Steve lives forever. Sure, I miss the physical. That's only natural. Yet death is like a butterfly flying through the night. Death is returning home. Everyone gets applauded on the other side. You see, we are eternal. That essence of Steve lives in our heart. Isn't that amazing that when a person dies, they merge with the universe. Their true essence never dies. To realize this, our perception of death changes. Sure, we will still have the pain, but it will be less. Can you imagine dying and becoming one with the universe? Wow. Every single one of us will return home someday. I will miss Steve, yet a part of Steve exists inside of me. I can still see his smile. Steve, rest in peace. It was an honor to know you. We come into this world knowing we are the universe. Over time, we have forgotten our true nature. We create masks to reflect who we think we are. 
Over time, we play stupid games with one another. My mask is better than yours. I'm declaring war on you. I don't like your mask. I'm going to gossip about you. I like your mask. I'm still going to gossip about you. The great masters have said, take off your mask. Discover your true nature. Remember who you were before you were born. What if the book of life <coughs> is not a book? You can read all the great books, but what is your experience? You may spout the words, but is your heart full of experience? Are you kind when you're trying to convince someone? Does it need convincing? Do you feel superior over one another? My religion is better than yours. You are going to hell. We must learn to be, be, be tolerant with one another. There is a thread of love tying us all together. Each religion is different and unique, yet the thread binds us together. We all believe in God. Look within your heart to discover the thread of love. Imagine the whole world would express their goodness in their daily life. There would be peace on earth. War would be obsolete. Mankind would truly cooperate with one another. We would see the unity of life. Man could truly solve their problems. Humility would be the way. Power and control of others would be obsolete. Politicians would truly be for the benefit of the people. You would not have someone in office for their own power and ego. That's all it takes. Be kind moment by moment. The world will change. Do you remember the pickup games you played when you were a kid? There was no adult supervision. There were just kids playing for fun. Nowadays, kids are part of a team with a coach. Many coaches think that winning is the goal. They yell and curse at the kids. The kids just want to have fun. They are learning and growing. Don't take the joy out of life for them. Winning is not everything. In fact, the majority lose. But didn't Darwin say that survival of the fittest? In his book, he mentions co <coughs> cooperating in nature more than the survival of the fittest. Man needs to cooperate with one another and have fun. We all here to enjoy this life. We don't need coaches who put us down. Embrace your fears. Don't hide from them. If you do, they will never go away. They will always play peekaboo with you. When you embrace your fears head on, they will disappear. The mountain will become a molehole. Eventually the fear will disappear and never return again. Look inside and search for all the fearful things in your life. One by one, take each one and embrace your fear. You can do this. It's not easy. 
yet the reward will set you free. Is life like a cosmic merry-go-round? Everything is spinning. Look at the Earth and the planets <coughs> spinning around the sun. Look at the spinning galaxies. To me, it is like a cosmic merry-go-round. Everything is in sync and in motion. Nothing ever stops. It's constantly in motion. Yet at times, we are oblivious to this. We are driving in our cars with our cell phones. Did you know the Mayans had a calendar where the cycle was 24,000 years? What a ride to that must be. We are proud to have a calendar based upon the Earth traveling around the sun for one year. How about a calendar that lasts 24,000 years? Where do they get that kind of knowledge? They didn't have any kind of modern day instruments. To be honest, I'm loving seeing that silence, science and religion is slowly melting into each other. Both the scientists and the mystic have their own laboratories. The mystic has one within and the scientist is external. Both of them are doing research. Both of them are gaining wisdom. The scientist may say, what does the mystic know? The mystic will simply smile. There is nothing to prove. The truth needs no convincing. I'm looking forward to the day where scientists are mystics. When that happens, I think that's when things really will be interesting. When man embraces peace, many incredible inventions will come out. These inventions can't come to Earth if man is still born with each other. The mystics are discovering the field, which is quantum energy, which ties the entire universe together. A human being can connect to the field. Mystics have known this for thousands of years. Ponder the sober. Discover the merry-go-round of life inside of you.